Hello and welcome to our video on 50 years of Pablo Picasso. We are on our way to the Picasso Museum in Paris, marking the 50th anniversary of the death of Pablo Picasso with a great exhibition. For those who are new to the channel, please feel free to subscribe and click the notification bell so you'll get a reminder each time we publish a new video. The exhibition is built around certain key themes within the vast oeuvre of Pablo Picasso and designer Paul Smith came up with an exhibition concept that focuses on colour and graphic design elements. The first room we're visiting is dedicated to a series titled Le Déjeuner sur l'herbe, or in English, The Luncheon on the Grass. Picasso created these variations in the 1950s, and he refers actually to a work of Édouard Manet. Like Manet, Picasso questions the relative positioning of artist and model, as well as the place of the viewer. It was mainly between the summer of 1959 and 62 that he devoted himself fully to this project. He produced 27 paintings, around 140 drawings, and several dozen engravings and lino cuts. In these variations, the figures are sometimes moved or removed, or they have their attitudes and positions altered. This intensely colored red room tells the story of bullfighting. Pablo Picasso attended the ritual of bullfighting in Malaga from early childhood, and he would continue to go to the bull ring throughout his life. His fascination for the corrida inspired his art both in iconography and symbolically. He saw the struggle between humans and animals in broader terms as a stage for the opposition between the principles of life and death. This room presents paintings that were created in the time between 1940 and about 1945, a time when Paris was under occupation and Picasso was considered by the Nazi regime as a so-called degenerate artist. Nevertheless, Picasso stayed in Paris and remained active, but you can see that all of these works have a melancholic and somber look.
The title of this room is Imaginary Journeys. Pablo Picasso was very much attracted by African art and he had his own personal collection. The African and Oceanian objects were chiefly acquired at a time when most avant-garde artists valued them for their radical aesthetic. Picasso, however, also saw their ritual function. He was fascinated by their magical aspect. These artifacts were a rich repertoire of non-Western form and expression that Picasso would tap into in order to build up a new aesthetic language that reaffirms the power of art in the primary sense of the term. Now we are seeing some earlier works of Picasso, works of the so-called Blue Period, a time of melancholy that followed the death of his close friend Carlos Casagemas. From the autumn of 1901 onwards, Picasso created paintings and drawings with poignant portraits of solitary, anonymous figures, often from the fringes of society. They all have a somber look. However, Picasso renders a solemn dignity to these models by elevating their fixed poses into universal allegories of the human condition. In the autumn of 1906, Picasso's work on a simplifying form and space led him to concentrate almost exclusively on the female body. These works are inspired by ancient Iberian art that occurred in Spain from the 6th to the 2nd century BC. Picasso usually shows his figures in a fixed frontal pose, restricting his palette to pinks and beiges. And by the way, these paintings are precursors of one of Picasso's most important works, Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. The name of Picasso is also closely linked to the style of Cubism. 
Together with his friend and fellow artist Georges Braque, he developed a true visual revolution. Between 1907 and 1914, Cubism explored new forms of representation of nature and the human figure. Later, it turned also towards still lives and everyday objects, also including elements of collage. Typical features of Cubism are a reduced palette comprising shades of grey and beige, as well as fragmentation of reality in order to reassemble it on the canvas in a manner that verges on abstraction. This room is titled The Last Paintings and it shows indeed the creative output of Picasso's final years. Between 1969 and 1973 he produced hundreds of drawings and engravings and more than 350 canvases. At that time he focused mainly on representing the human figure and his Spanish heritage. These works are characterized by an explosion of colors and great freedom of expression. And they would prove to be important for the generation of painters who came after Picasso. These paintings contributed to a revival in contemporary painting. So, we hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave your comments and thoughts. See you soon.